YouTube, Witty Butter here, and we are back in Pokemon Flora Sky. Right, a few things uh, we've got to do in this episode. First things first, we're giving Pamela a whole new move. <clears throat> and that move is Rock Smash. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, um, Pamela has no way to deal with Steel types right now, and that will come into play kind of soon. Not in this episode, but the next. And uh, secondly, none of the moves that I thought Pamela would be learning, uh, she's learned. So her, I can tell from that that her move set and her learn set thingy is completely different from uh, Pokemon Black and White, which is causing me massive problems because I've had to rethink everything I was going to do with her move set. I mean, hopefully she will learn some of the moves that I need but I'm not entirely sure so for now I've given her Rock Smash as kind of a, a, a kind of a safety plan for myself uh, this is Silcoon very defensive it's like the Metapod of the third generation it evolves from Wurmple thing with Wurmple it evolves based on personality values I'll be honest I don't know what that means <laughs> specifically and I don't honestly care because it's very technical but I do know that personality values are given by the player, which kind of means that Wormpool is essentially what what Wormpool will evolve into is essentially random. Whether it will be a Silcoon or a Cascoon. Oh, Crunch! Crunch is like an upgrade from Bite. It's 80 base power, except for a part earlier there, which is obviously an upgrade from 60. But Crunch doesn't have that chance to make the opponent flinch. Um, that flinch chance isn't flinch chance isn't that big. I'll be honest, and I can live without it. Power is more important. That would be the first of many failed evolutions. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with those yet. I don't know whether I should cut them out or speed them up. Or mm, if anyone has any suggestions, feel free. Uh, this nice lady heals you, and she points out that that's a uh, honey tree. You may remember we got honey last episode. And that's the kind of tree that you just smear it all over. We can't get to it right now because it's a cut tree. Mm. This lady had an Abra. Not very interesting. Crunch just tore it apart, really. <laughs> mm. More wild battles I have to cut out. Yay. X attack. X attack is used in a battle. And it just raises your attack power. It's kind of like cheating, in my opinion. It's like a drug. That's a headbutt tree. When a, po when a Pokemon learns headbutt, you can use it on that tree, and a Pokemon will fall out. Mm. Mm. Ah, a Mulga. I like a Mulga. I love squirrels. Flying squirrels is just awesome. And that is a flying squirrel that shoots electricity. That's quite cool. It's very, it's very fast, but it's kind of fragile, which is isn't really demonstrated in this battle because Pamela is, well, it's it's a patriot. It's not exactly the strongest of things. Saying that though, um, it does one shot a hoot hoot. Um. I want to say it's just the random number generator really liking me today, but I honestly have no idea what's going on. Uh, this is the trainer card, because I haven't shown it before. Not that interesting, to be honest. Just, yeah. Um, mm, yep, yeah, just. I like to make sure Pamela's healed up, because being a. Well, bring an unevolved Pokemon, it can. Well, it is really fragile. This is the other thing that Cascoon, sorry, Wormpool can evolve into. Cascoon. Um, as I said before, it's completely, it's sort of completely random what Wormpool will evolve into. But it's not random what Cascoon or Silcoon will evolve into because they're set. That's um, Dustox and Beautifly, respectively. You'll see both of those in this episode, if you haven't already. Which I don't think you have. Hmm. Uh, this guy. Do, 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 has a Ninkada. I like Ninkada. Quite a cool bug. Sort of defensive-ish. 
it evolves into Ninjask, which is, for those who don't know, one of the, well, the fastest Pokemon in the entire game. Very useful in that sense, but it's also got one of the weirdest evolutions, in that it can also evolve into Shedinja, when you have a spare space, spare slot in your party and you have a regular Pokeball in your inventory. A Shedinja is quite cool, but it's also <laughs> not cool at all in some ways. Um, the main way is that its ability, Wonder Guard, stops any damage being dealt to it um, unless it's super effective. Uh, which would be really, really good if it didn't have one HP. Um, mm, it hasn't got great stats overall, but its ability does sort of redeem it, and its place in the metagame is a bit dodgy. I'm pretty sure it's it's in underused or never used, but if it's used correctly, it can be devastating. <laughs> but it it is kind of difficult to use it correctly, mainly because almost every team has a counter or some way that they could take out a Shedinja. Mm. This is the berry shop. Bit pointless for me to go in here and get a pail. Berries are gone there. But, um, because I don't have an internal battery on an emulator, obviously. And I can't actually grow berries in this game. Which is upsetting. And fine at the same time, because I, I don't like growing berries. I don't really need to either. This is the Beautifly. Uh, evolution of Silcoon. Um, yeah. I think this is the Pokemon that looks all pretty and stuff, but it's actually, it actually sucks, like, brain juices or something. I don't know, it's kind of gory. It, I'd, <laughs> it might have just been a creepypasta I read or something, but I remember hearing somewhere. This is Dustox, the evolution of Cascoon. Quite good. Um, demonstrating psychic abilities there. Yeah. <laughs> if it was a psychic type, I'd have used Crunch, but it's a bug type. And dark type moves aren't very effective against bugs, which I don't understand at all. The second failed evolution of this episode. I really need to figure out what I'm going to do with these because they just. Uh, although, they're not, there's not going to be that many of them in the later episodes. It's just right now, Pamela's going to be levelling up quite a bit because of um, the low level and everything. Um, it all sort of... Ooh. That wasn't me speeding him up, he just randomly spazzed out. <laughs> um, hmm. Short little tour of this city. Um, I show off some things. I think I missed one or two things, but I will show them in the next episode, don't worry. I will try and show everything, like I said. I'm a man of my word. Uh, this guy teaches Rollout, a move that um, spans five turns, and it gets stronger every turn. Um, you can combine it with Defense Roll, Defense Coil. Wait, um, I don't know, something like that, and it increases power. Don't know how much. He is a trade. Mm, Planko, Growlithe, yeah doesn't really interest me. Although I do like Growlithe, and it, it is, and it does evolve into something quite cool, everything, but it's just, nah, nah. This is the name reader. Uh, you can change your Pokemon's nickname here. That's quite useful, if you don't like a Pokemon's nickname. Um, it's fine, you can't change the nicknames of uh, traded Pokemon. Which, it doesn't really matter that much, to be honest. Especially considering this is a hack and it doesn't have online, so there's not exactly many trades you can do, aside from that guy upstairs. See, this is, the reason I keep um, clicking on people's twice is that whenever they have one box of text, it always surprises me, because I always assume that I have to like press A throughout it. I like this music, by the way. I might increase it a bit here. This guy abuses his students. If 
they don't behave, they can get a taste of my quick claw. He not only abuses them, he slashes them. How how messed up is that? I would hate to be a student in this world. I don't know if that's exclusively in Hoenn, or if it's just teachers are allowed to beat their students and slash their guts open, but... Uh, buy a load of super potions. Kind of need them. They're not all... well, <laughs> they are kind of overpowered for this stage in the game, but... Not for us, mainly because we haven't overleveled the trap with us. I sell off a bunch of my stuff. They've increased the price of evolution stones. Um, for the selling price, I mean, which is good. Uh huh. I get rid of a bunch of stuff. I don't know if I use Quick Claw. It basically means that there's a chance that your Pokemon will go first in a battle. I don't know if Pamela will need it, to be honest. Because she's going to be kind of fast anyway. Considering she's going to be over leveled. And. It, it, it would kind of be wasting a hold item, in my opinion. And I don't want to do that because every little helps with Pamela. Ah. This is the. Uh, that was the Team Rocket. The, sorry. The building that Team Magma has invaded. Um. We'll go in there in a second. And I get to show off something else. Well, not show off. Point out. Point out is a good word, yeah. It's not even one word, it's two words. Sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Right, this is... kind of chilled out place. And then you get here. This is a forced double battle. So I have to show you guys what I do when I'm in a double battle with, with Pamela. And... It's, it's kind of all I can do because I don't want to use X items no matter what because they are they're just awful they're drugs in my opinion and I'm not having any Pamela of mine on drugs uh, alright okay so I just do attacks and with the other Pokemon that's forced to come out I use a non-damaging move because like I said Pamela will be doing all damage in this Except for maybe a few special examples, which I don't know if there will be any, and if there are, then I will point them out. Okay. Ah, uh, flame body. Burn, as I said before, uh, halves physical damage, or physical attack power, and it hurts you every turn. That's awful for Pamela, because it's a physical attacker. But luckily, as this is a double battle, I can use Piplop's turn to heal that burn, and I haven't wasted a damaging turn, which is great. Because, you know, I need all the damaging turns I can get. This building has a few challenges for me, because they're not easy battles, and they like to abuse status ailments like poison and stuff. Lucky I have a lot of berries. Um, yeah... Later on in this building, you'll see another example of me actually having to think a bit. <laughs> Piplup goes up a lot of levels there. I wonder if... I wonder if, um... Piplup and Starly will evolve by the end of this Let's Play. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Place your bets now! There's no reward. Just, I guess, gloating privileges. <laughs> Enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I generally use berries to heal status ailments at this stage, mainly because I don't have many full heals. You picked up, we picked up one earlier. It just heals any status ailments, and I don't really want to waste just anything. Right. Um. Uh, just yeah, re-equip a Petra berry, which cures poison, and. Uh, Take a quick potion, make sure Pamela's all, all nice. Now, I had no idea how to end this video, because it wouldn't let me get into those seats like I wanted. So I talked to this guy, and then I kind of walk around for a bit, and then hide under a bush. <laughs> okay, 
next episode we'll be going through this building and probably finding the gym leader. And this is what I say, Ajo!